Hey guys, Harrison here, and today we're making a waste oil foundry. Now, if you are as poor as me, this is the foundry for you. It's super cheap to build, zero dollars to fuel, and works extremely well. So let's go ahead and get into it. So you might be wondering, how does a waste oil foundry even work? Because we know that oil is not very flammable. You can put a blowtorch to it, and in fact, it will not burn very well at all. And the answer to this is we have two properties we can take advantage of that we can make the oil more flammable, which will then turn it into a great fuel for our waste oil foundry and work really good. So the first property you can use to our advantage is first by increasing the surface area of the oil. Now this will increase its flammability. So here are some oil inside of a spray bottle and a small fire. And I'll show you how good the oil will burn now once I spray it in this. As you can see, the oil becomes a lot more flammable, and that's going to be the first property we're going to use to our advantage. So as you saw before, the oil was not flammable to a blowtorch, but now I've heated the oil to its flash point around 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and we'll observe how much more flammable the oil has become. And as you can see, we have ignition and now the oil is flammable. So this will be the second property we'll take advantage of. Now that we know the properties that we're going to use to our advantage, let's go ahead and build the burner part of the foundry. So to construct this, I first used a 10 inch long, quarter inch diameter steel pipe. And then that goes into a quarter inch adapter to a half inch adapter. And then there's this half inch coupling. And then this half inch coupling feeds into a half inch adapter to a three-fourths inch adapter. Next, we have this female to female coupler, which is three-fourths inch, and this will be placed over our quarter inch steel pipe about right there. I also went ahead and added a piece of paper towel to hold this coupling in the right place. I have here now a 13 inch long, one inch diameter steel pipe, and our previous part that we make slides right into this part, just like this. Takes a little bit of willpower sometimes and it fits in there just like that. Now our final step is to install our blower. This is a blower from an old mattress pump. You can use whatever you like, but in this case, this mattress pump blower screws perfectly on to the end of our pipe here, which makes a nice clean fitting. So the basic idea of how this works is first our air enters through this port right here. And since it constricts, it makes the airflow much higher velocity. And then up here is our oil drip tube. So this is where our oil will be flowing into our burner. Now the way I have this positioned is, is this oil drip is right in front of the output of our high velocity airflow. So when the oil falls in front of that, it atomizes it using the first principle that I talked about. So that'll make it much more flammable, which then can enter our combustion chamber and burn. Okay, so now that the burner's done, let's go ahead and build the actual main base of the foundry. So here's what we're gonna be using for our base of our foundry. It's gonna be this old propane tank. It's completely out of propane and I went ahead and pulled a vacuum on it to make sure. Now what's left to do is to cut a line right along here around the whole propane tank and this will create our lid and our bottom part of our foundry. So here's the propane tank after it being cut open. I went ahead and drilled a bunch of holes for placement bolts, which will hold down our tail wall insulation. And I also went ahead and drilled a big hole for placement of our burner. Finally, I went ahead and welded everything into place. I also added some little tacks up on top to help keep the lid in place. Okay, so after all the welding, as you can see, I added a new line in from the old one. The old one was just a little too short, so the old line comes up here. Welded these little stakes on, which help the lid stay in its right place. And I hooked it up to this oil feeder. So all this is, is a bleach jug upside down with a simple ball valve on it, which then just goes down into a tube. This was also welded on over here. We got our blower in and I covered it all in this 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, high temperature spray paint. And that will keep everything from rusting too. So now all we have to do is go ahead and insulate this thing. So first I'm gonna be using this KO wool, which is a ceramic fiber. So it's very good at insulation. And using these stainless steel bolts and uh, some washers, I am going to bolt it in. Okay, so now that we got all of our KO wool in here and this will be very nice and insulated, it's time to cover it 
because this kale wool is long ceramic fibers, which are practically asbestos. So we're gonna wanna cover it to make sure those fibers don't enter the air with this refractory mortar. Okay, I covered everything with the refractory. I'm not doing the lid because the refractory on the lid tends to fall off. Um, I'm probably eventually gonna add some chicken wire and whatnot in there to make sure the refractory holds on better, but for now, I'm not gonna do that. But all we gotta do now is let this cure. So first thing we gotta do is to fill our reservoir with our used oil. In this case, it's just used motor oil. Okay, that should be enough right there. And uh, it doesn't consume that much oil. So now I'm just gonna open the valve a little bit to get oil flowing. And we should see oil start to come down our tube. Yep, there it goes. So the first thing that we're going to melt is these lava rocks here. And as you can see, I already had to prep the forge by putting some paper, which will be our kindling. And the reason for this is, even though we have the atomization, which helps increase the flammability, it's not going to be able to self-sustain the combustion without a little bit of help from the kindling. So to prep our paper to make it burn better, I'm just going to throw a little bit of used motor oil on it. Okay, and that will be plenty right there. So, all we gotta do now is to light her up. Now that's burning, it is time to turn on the blower and let the oil flow. We now have ignition and it is roaring like a jet engine. As you can see, it's already getting red hot in there. Come back in about 10 minutes and see how good the rock has melted. She is purring and she is getting very hot. I can't even see in there, it's so bright. So we'll go ahead and take out our lava rock very soon. Okay, it's time to take out our lava. The heat on this is insane. Let's dump our lava As you can see by the previous segment, this foundry gets extremely hot. Rock can melt anywhere from 600C to 1200C. So um, don't got an exact temperature on it, but either way, we are reaching very high temperatures. I don't know if it'll melt steel, but it probably comes very close. But here is some of the obsidian pieces that came out of our lava. So... Here's some really cool pieces, some really thin ones. As you can see, streaks of iron in there. I don't know why the iron forms in streaks when the rock looks like it was evenly dispersed with iron. So I don't know why the iron kind of coagulates, but as you can see, beautiful streaks of iron in there. Another big piece over here of that. Got some other really cool pieces that look like they're out of a video game. If you ever played Wizard 101's, um, what's the the last world, Dragonspire? I think this is this is something you'd see in Dragonspire. Let me know in the comments if you guys actually remember that game because that game was fucking awesome. I game the hell out of that. Here's another really cool piece, which is more on the smooth end, and you see some more streaks of iron. 
And here's my favorite piece, just because the size of it. It's still a little hot, but look at that. I don't know, it doesn't really show my camera well, but there's beautiful streaks of iron in there. Massive globule of obsidian. So yeah, that's all we're gonna do today for melting stuff wise. So that wraps it up for today's video. Hope you guys really enjoyed. Next video, I'm gonna show you guys how to turn any object into a solid metal replica. And I mean any object you want, which is a really cool technique that you can do. So that wraps it up and hope you guys have a good rest of your day and see ya.